So here if we can see celebrating signal processing. It's very important. Here we can see celebrating the camera itself. We can celebrate the signal processing by using the camera itself. Let us quickly humble request to you all to see the screen. So we are we are celebrating signal processing. Is it possible for us to celebrate signal processing? Yes, it is possible for us to celebrate signal processing. Let us celebrate and experience how best we can celebrate signal processing. To start with, understanding the signal processing by switching on the front camera in the mobile phone. So without mobile phone, we cannot survive today. That is the great example nowadays. We are always living with mobile phones. Hence, by having the most uh, useful things in our day-to-day -day life, if we try to understand the subject, then it will be a big celebration. That is why using mobile phone, how best we can celebrate uh, signal processing, which will be more powerful and more uh, simple and more effective. That is why switching on the front camera in the mobile phone, how best we can understand signal processing. Switching on the front camera in the mobile phone means what? Say for example, this is something like, this is not so. So let us say how to understand the signal processing by switching on the front camera. Okay. So all of you, if you are working with PC, if you are working with personal computer, if you are not being with mobile phone or any, any mode, if you switch on the front camera or if you switch on the camera in general, switch on the front camera and we have to smile in front of it. Smiling in front of the front camera, the screen also smiles, we agree. I hope you can able to realize and visualize what I'm trying to say, which we have done several times. Most of us are looking at our face only by looking at the front camera, not by looking at the mirror. Hence, front camera is becoming as a mirror for most of us. Hence, smiling in front of the front camera, the screen is also smiling. That is the message I like to convey. Smiling in front of the camera, screen also smiles. That is the message. So from this, what do we understand? This is called video signal processing. We agree? This is called video signal processing. Smiling in front of the front camera, screen is also smiling. This is called video signal processing. Taking the selfie in front camera, the screen shows smiling image. So while smiling, if you take a snapshot, in the screen there is an image, that image is also showing the smiling image, which is called as image processing. Now, listening music in a mobile phone, we are listening to music in a mobile phone, then which is audio signal processing. Then by discussing with someone else in the mobile phone, by discussing with someone else in the mobile phone, which is conversation through mobile phone, which is called speech signal processing. So there is a video signal processing happening in our mobile phone, image processing happening in our mobile phone, audio signal processing happening in our mobile phone, speech signal processing happening in our mobile phone. And most importantly, today's class, attending online classes using mobile phone, most of us are attending online classes using mobile phone, which is the combination of speech, audio, image and video all put together, we call it as multimedia signal processing, which is multimedia signal processing. Yes, mobile phone is capable of performing multimedia signal processing. Now, the question to you all is, or the question to you all is, in all these five applications, one thing is common. What is that? Anyone of you? In all these five applications, one thing is common. What is that? All of you can try. Let me check in all these five applications. One thing is common. What is that? You can share something in your chat box. In all these five applications, one thing is in common. Common. Output follows the input, which is very important. Output follows the input. Say, for example, once again, I repeat. In smiling in front of the camera means what? In video signal processing, what is the input? Input is our face, which is going inside the camera. What is the output? Output is also the face, which is visible in the screen. 
Similarly, in image processing, the smiling face is going as an input to the camera. The smiling face is an output from the screen. Similarly, by listening music, music is the input to the microphone, and the same music is the output from the loudspeaker. So conversation through mobile phone, again, voice is the input to the microphone. The same voice is the output from the microphone. Similarly, in multimedia signal processing, my screen is visible to you all, which is image processing. When I'm rotating this mouse, the mouse is also rotating in your screen, which is video signal processing. I am speaking now, which you are able to listen. This is speech signal processing. And you have seen, you have listened to music, that is audio signal processing. So all this are happening in our mobile phone. In all these cases, what I'm doing in my screen, as well as in my microphone, is reflecting in your screen and your loudspeaker and vice versa. So in this context, I can say that signal processing means output follows the input. That is the moral from this story, which is looking the same signal processing in some other perspective to celebrate much better. That is the idea here. Okay. Now, going to the next screen, for audio and speech signal processing, the output in the loudspeaker follows the input to the microphone, which is one-dimensional signal processing, as we all know very well. Correct? So if you look at the screen, output follows the input in one-dimensional signal processing. What is one-dimensional signal processing? If there is only one axis, say for example, with respect to time, my speech is visible in the screen, which is called as one-dimensional signal processing. Correct? As you all know, the speech is one-dimensional signal and audio is one-dimensional signal. Hence, that is also output is following the input as you rightly see. So the waveform that what we see in the CRO is one-dimensional signal. Very simply, if I want to say, the waveform that what we see in our uh, screen, in the CRO screen, which is one-dimensional signal processing, the sine wave is one-dimensional signal processing, cosine wave is one-dimensional signal processing, where it is the one-dimensional waveform with respect to time that you must understand. If you look at the screen, so there is a microphone here and there is a digital signal processing and there is a loudspeaker. So when we say hello, the loudspeaker should also say hello. You see here, hello is the input to the microphone and obviously hello is the output in the loudspeaker. So output is following the input in much better way through diagrams, through this animation and justifying this almost agree. Let us say it is a color mic means, or in the stage if we are having a mic means, if I say hello in the microphone, the same hello is coming out in the loudspeaker. Hence, this justifies output is following the input in one dimensional signal processing, which is audio and speech. That is the moral from this slide. It's very interesting, right? Now coming to the video. For image and video signal processing, the output in the screen follows the input to the camera, which is two dimensional signal processing. Y two dimensional, here you have plane. Plane means what? X and Y. As you know very well, X and Y coordinates. Hence, you can see output follows the input in two dimensional signal processing. Here you can see the input is couples. The output in the screen also couples. So looking at each other with a lot of smile, with a lot of happiness and a lot more. What is going inside the camera is the two, two faces. What is coming outside from the camera? The same two faces. So output follows the input. The screen or the image justifies output is following the input in video signal processing and image processing, which is two dimensional signal processing. And our class, what we are handling right now, is a good example for multimedia signal processing. Fantastic, right? So very easily we can celebrate signal processing like this. So for audio and speech signal processing, the output in the loudspeaker follows the input to the microphone as shown, which is one dimensional signal processing. For the video and image processing, the output in the screen follows the input of the camera, which is two dimensional signal processing, as you see. So from this, we can conclude that when output follows the input, then it is signal processing. Once again, I repeat, when output follows the input, then it is signal processing. OK, so it's very interesting. So to make the output, if the output signal need to be follow the input signal, then sampling frequency is at least twice that of the input signal's maximum frequency. This you have studied every time, long back in signal sense system. The purpose of signal sense system to say this Fs is greater than or equal to Fm. 
the purpose of introducing this fs is greater than or equal to e2 fm is to reconstruct the input signal in the output other than that there is no significance for this fs is greater than or equal to fm it's very important right fs is greater than or equal to fm meaning if not the output signal will never follow the input signal this is called as aliasing aliasing signal is useless signal as we all know very well if you look at the screen it's very important so there is an input signal which is continuous and we have taken the samples in the first image and from this with the help of these samples we can reconstruct the same sinusoidal signal in the output with respect to the first image but with respect to the second image the frequency is very high the input signal and analog signal frequency is very high and when we take samples here like this and the reconstructed signal will be something like this so the input signal is around some 10 hertz say for example the output signal is around 1 hertz that means 10 hertz signal is going to the microphone the loudspeaker if we are able to get only 1 hertz signal obviously it will not be the valid information so if the sampling frequency is greater than 2 twice of the information signals maximum frequency then output will follow the input if not the output will never follow the input these two images also justifies the same in the first image as you see you have taken several samples in even in one cycle right say for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 12 so there are 12 samples approximately for one waveform so the 12 times greater than the fm hence if you join these lines in the output the output will follow the input no doubt about it so this first waveform satisfies this equation fs is greater than or equal to fm the second waveform if you see so you have more than uh, 10 cycles in the input but if you take the samples like this slowly the samples are looking like this and if you join these samples output will be something like this so but the input is something like this as you see in the continuous signal so this is called aliasing so when the output is not following the input means that is called aliasing that you have seen so this is the aliasing waveform in the time domain so normally you could have seen the aliasing waveform in the frequency domain uh, for that for your uh, information i will show that also for your convenience so now you are very much clear about what is uh, signal processing when output follows the input is signal processing when the output we follow the input means when the output should follow the input means you have to satisfy nyquist sampling theorem which is fs is greater than or equal to fm for that purpose alone you have studied signal sensing systems do you agree with me i need some response in the chat box is it quite interesting just look at the screen again it's very interesting if the doppler frequency exists on pr for aliasing aliasing this is called aliasing so when you take the samples here look at the screen when you take the samples here like this so the output will be like this so the input is this, like this the output is like this means there is no use in doing this if it may be an image or it may be a video or it may be a audio or it may be a speech if the input is like this the output is like this means when i say hello it will say ah so there no way it is meaning meaningful that's why you given the thing aliasing signal is useless signal if you are not able to do, take uh, the samples greater than the twice that of the information signal there is no need for processing just like that we can drop it because fs is not if fs is less than or equal to 2f means processing that signal is meaningless that is why this is highlighted much in signals in system this is for your kind information still you will agree appreciate in this way form this is what already you have seen this is in frequency domain if you look at the first uh, row here fs is greater than 2f hence we are able to separate the corresponding uh, frequencies yes this is the non aliased output is following the input signal so when fs is 2f which is perfect sampling so it is the adjacent uh, thing it's it's coming closer right it's coming closer so when fs is less than 2f which is called as under sampling so the triangles overlaps this small triangle because of overlap we are having a small triangle here this small triangles are called as aliasing what do you understand from this small triangle so the first triangle's highest frequency is overlapped with 
second triangle's uh, lowest frequency. So the highest frequency components are reconstructed as lowest frequency components. That we need to understand from this small triangle. Okay. So to justify this, again I am coming to this image. So the highest signal, let's say it is 3 hertz signal. 3 hertz signal is reconstructed as 1 hertz signal. From this diagram, if you want to say 3 hertz signal. So 1, 2, 3 hertz signal is reconstructed as 1 hertz signal. And 1 hertz signal will also reconstruct as 1 hertz signal. So 1 hertz signal is, will be reconstructed as 1 hertz signal. 3 hertz signal will also reconstruct it as 1 hertz signal. So 3 hertz signal will overlap with 1 hertz signal. That is what the picture shows. So the when frequency increases, higher frequency components will overlap with lower frequency component and it will destroy the entire quality of the signal. That is what overlapping. So the overlapping says what I what I have said right now. Okay. So the one uh, once again I repeat, right? So three head signal will be reconstructed as one head signal. But one head signal, this is the more than enough samples. So one heads will be reconstructed as one heads, but three heads will also reconstruct as one heads. Four heads can uh, signal can also be reconstructed with one heads. So all the higher frequencies will be reconstructed only as lower frequency. Hence, there will be an overlap of low frequency components and high frequency component, which is called as aliasing. I hope you have understood much better than what you have uh, so far. Okay, so the moral of this discussion is FS must be greater than 2 FM to make the output to follow the input. So very clearly now we have understood why we need to sample the continuous time signals or analog signals. Why not continuous time signals can be used as it is as we use it in linear integrated circuits. Wow. So we are going, we have already studied linear integrated circuits and we are very much familiar with linear integrated circuits. They are all pure analog signal processing. Why don't we continue analog signal processing as it is? Say for example, if you see the screen, what is this? Operational amplifiers, integrated circuits. So this integrated circuit is analog signal, which is very good analog signal processing. And if you see the input and output waveform, the input waveform is a square waveform and the output waveform is a rectangular triangular waveform. So the output is integration of the input. So here we are able to do signal processing. You see here we are able to do signal processing. There is an input continuous time analog signal. Here we have an input continuous time analog signal. And the output is also processed signal. What is the processing here? Integration is the processing. So the triangular, that is the triangular, sorry, the square waveform in the input is processed. The processing here is integrated. So integration is the process. So the square waveform in the input is integrated and we are getting triangular waveform in the output. Fantastic, right? Square waveform in the input is integrated and we are getting the triangular waveform in the output. So where the signal processing is being done, so it is continuous time signal processing. It's very well, you can say analog signal processing. Why we have to go for digital signal processing? That is the question here. You see here, that's very important. Why we need to do the sample? The continuous time signals are analog signal. Why not continuous time signals can be used as it is, as we use it in linear integrated circuits. I mean, LIC, but it's LIC, we signal processing, continuous time signal processing, analog signal processing, all Analog signal processing, all that part, no? Integrator, the justification. Again, one more example. Up amp differentiator circuits. This is operational amplifier differentiator circuits. When we give the square wave as an input, we are able to get the spike. Spike is the integrated output, as we all know very well. So the input signal is processed in the output. The processing here is differentiation. Hence, differentiated output we are able to get, which is spikes. So this is continuous time signal processing or analog signal processing. So here we never thought about in a linear integrated circuit subject, we never discussed about FS is greater than or equal to 2 FM. Okay. So again, the question here is already we are capable of doing analog signal processing. We are able to do integration. We are able to do differentiation. Then why we have to go for sampling? Why sampling has come into picture? Already we are capable of performing signal processing much better way is the question now. The same question I'm asking you people. Can you guess why I should go for sampling? Already I'm very much comfortable in continuous time signal processing where two proofs has been shown. So the integration is analog signal processing where the square wave is the input, triangular waveform is the output. And differentiation is again, again another input for uh, analog signal processing where square wave is the input and spikes are the output. Uh, 
I am very much comfortable in comfortable in analog signal processing. Then why should I go for sampling? Here, without sampling, I am able to get my output. Why should I need sampling? Is the question. I am uh, expecting some answers from uh, you in the chat box. All of you. That's very important. Next here is already I am very much comfortable in analog signal processing. Why should I go for sampling? Is the question. Okay. So the right answer is it is not possible to process continuous time signals in digital programmable devices like microprocessors, microcontrollers, digital signal processors, FPGA, Zika, Intel Core, i5, or i7, or i9, or AMD, or Qualcomm Snapdragon, or any digital programmable devices. Shall we just give the same with a simple and powerful example? This example, all of you know very well. Okay. So please do the following sequence. Already you people have done this. First, look at this. Please do the following sequence. Take a calculator. Either it may be FS100 or mobile calculator or PC calculator, etc. Type your lucky number. Say 6. Divide this number by 0 and check the answer. 6 divided by 0. And what will be the answer? Calculator will show any of the following. So it, it shows cannot divide by 0 or it can show math error or it can show error etc. So from this as we all know this is because of infinite values when 6 divided by 0 the value is infinity so infinite values cannot be processed by digital programmable devices like microprocessor hence one, pro one process processor says cannot divide by 0 one processor says math error one processor says errors etc. Hence Infinite values cannot be processed by digital program devices like microprocessor, microcontroller, DSP, FPG, and ASIC, etc. So, processor failed to process analog signal. That's very important. This is the message that I like to convey. When it is analog, when it is continuous, it has infinite values. When the values are infinite, our processors will fail to process. Okay. So, the system calculator output says cannot divide by zero. And our FS standard calculator says math error so this justifies input signals cannot be processed if it is analog why because when it is analog it has infinite values is the moral of the story so divide by zero is a disaster for any microprocessor or digital signal processor this is called as exception which is disability of the processor but it has to be identified and notified in our 8051 this divide by zero error is notified through overflow flag when overflow flag sets and then it notifies there is a divide by zero error similarly all process will have some kind of flags to notify there is a divide by zero error has come which is called as an exception and this exception is notified through a message called cannot divide by zero or math error which is very important so the moral here is the processor need to process a signal it should have finite samples to convert the infinite values in analog to finite values in digital we go for sampling so ADC converts infinite values in analog to finite values in digital. That's all. It's very interesting. So the whole world is analog and the whole processing world is digital. Hence, it is mandated to convert analog signals X of T to digital signals X of N before processing. Again, convert back the process digital signals, output signal as Y of N to analog signal Y of T. This analog to digital conversion before processing and digital to analog conversion after processing is done by a module called Codec which is coder and decoder. Coder means which is ADC and decoder means which is DAC, which is called a sound card in our PC. So we connect our uh, stereo connectors of our microphone and loudspeaker to our PC or mobile only to the sound card, which is a codec, which is ADC and DAC. It's fantastic, right? So again, it's very interesting. So need for codec to do signal processing means, so there is a microphone and there is an ADC because infinite values cannot be processed by this DSP, hence infinite values will become finite but when you take samples. So the first ADC will do sampling, quantizing and encoding as you know very well. The first part of the ADC is sampling. So when we sample the signal, infinite values will become finite values. That is the model of the discussion. So the finite values of X of N can be processed more comfortably and we will get Y of N. Y of N cannot be given to the loudspeaker directly because the whole world is analog. Hence Y of n has to be converted to Y of t. This Y of t has to be given to the loudspeaker. So the input is also analog, output is also analog. That's why the whole world is analog. But the whole processing world is digital. So to convert analog to digital, we need ADC. 
convert digital to analog we need DAC without IDC and DAC DSP is impossible hence the combination of both ADC and DAC is called as codec where the output has to follow the input fantastic right so this is how we have to celebrate the subject so codec is the sound card in our PC or mobile phone where we connect our earphone or headphone stereo connected to the microphone which is nothing but ADC and DAC so with this I will wind up our today's class from the next slide onwards we will continue